Welcome back to ABC 13 Weather Now. As Black History Month comes to a close, we wanted to share something special with our viewers. We're joined now by my colleague and friend, ABC 13 Chief Forecaster David Tillman, who wants to share with you some of his perspectives as one of the few black meteorologists in the country. According to a recent survey taken in 2020, just 2% of meteorologists identified as black. Another one of our weather friends, meteorologist Justin Ballard from the Houston Chronicle, has been working on a weather story for Black History Month. And he's been trying to interview David for his story. So we thought, why not just do it live on Weather Now? So Justin, David, take it away. Thank you. So, you know, obviously this is an underrepresented uh, kind of community. First of all, what got you into weather? Did you have any role models? I'm sure you did. Well, it, it wasn't a role model that got me into weather. It was the uh, April 10th, 1979 Wichita Falls, Texas tornado, mm -hmm. a big wedge tornado F4 that I saw live on TV. And I said, when I saw that, that's something that I want to study. And it, it basically put a cap on it because I was already thinking about studying meteorology anyway. But when I saw that tornado, you know, said, okay, I need to study tornadoes. That kind of sealed the deal, right? Mm -hmm. Very yeah. often it is an event that kind of gets us into weather. Now, you said you were talking to me just a little bit ago before. You didn't necessarily have a, a knowledge that you were going into weather as a kid, but you did grow up watching someone in St. Louis. Well, I, I knew I wanted to be a meteorologist. I just didn't think I was going to be on television. <laughs> that Slight didn't happen until yeah. late into, into uh, college. Right. But uh, I, I knew it was out there on the ledge because I had some pioneers in in St. Louis, where I grew up, uh, that were uh, doing the weather as African Americans on television. Uh, the first one was a lady by the name of Diane White. And what I didn't know at the time, I didn't find this out until about 15 years ago, she was actually the first African American person to do to present the weather on television and she was the first female to produce the weather on television she graduated with a degree in journalism from the university of missouri and then she um, was a model on the side and she ended up doing weather for a station there in st louis in 1962 about the same time that she was pioneering as an African-American model in the department stores there. So I saw her and I said, okay, it's a possibility if I wanted to take it. And then the two gentlemen that came after that was a, was a gentleman named uh, uh, Brian Busby. He was actually in school at uh, St. Louis University studying meteorology, and he was actually on television there. And another one was Alan Seals. He was on WG in Chicago at the time uh, doing midday weather. And both of those gentlemen, you know, they kind of let me know that it's possibility if I wanted to take it. So you kind of grew up with, uh, you know, kind of a diverse set of faces that you were watching. Yeah. How have we kind of moved the needle as a collective, you know, uh, small industry, albeit, but how have we kind of moved the needle forward? Well, I, I just think, that, you know, more of us need to be in places where people can see us. And the last time I checked, I think there's just less than 140 African-American meteorologists in the country on television doing the weather, and that makes up about five, five and a half percent of all of the people doing it. Back when I started, well, there, I was one of like 18. Right. <laughs> and small, so it was one number. tenth of one percent <laughs> of all people that were presenting weather on television was an African American person. That was 30 years ago. So the more and more of us that get out there and expose this career to young African American kids, the more that will be interested in it and we'll be able to do it. I got lucky because, again, I had Diane White, Brian Busby, and Alan Seals that I could kind of look at and say, okay, oh, I, I don't mean to leave out as well Janice Huff. Of course. Uh, yeah. I saw her as well in high school. So that, th those are all inspiring people for me. And those numbers have not changed too terribly much. I mean, when you're looking at percentages in the 70s, June Bacon Bercy, who is kind of, uh, you know, the name that comes to mind, she was the first, I believe, degreed meteorologist uh, on TV, African-American woman. And her numbers that she found in her research was less than 2%, 1.8, I believe, Amazing. or 1.6%. So those numbers haven't changed a whole lot. Now, what gives you hope for the future? Well, I, I, I think that, I mean, we have um, uh, several people on network television uh, that are exposing the science to people. I think the, the industry of meteorology itself, not just television meteorology, uh, I think the more and more that people understand it's not just television you can do. You can go work for airlines. You go work for oil companies, private industry. You can do different things with a degree in meteorology. The more people that will get started in it. And then those people that are inspired by storms like I was as a kid. I mean, you look know? at it right there. 
there, inspired me to do some uh, storm chasing and things like that. Those people need to know that there, there, there is a career path that you can take where you can make this your passion for the rest of your life. And, uh, and, and, and you know, it's out there for you if you want to take it. So I'm optimistic that uh, it's grown a long way in the last 30 years and that it will continue to grow in the future. Sounds great. Thank you so much, David. Sure. I'm glad we could do this live and in person. Back to you, Travis. Hey, thanks to you both, David and Justin, for joining us today.